Okay, in this lesson we're going to go ahead and generate our data layer from Visual Studio for the Entity Framework. So I'll go ahead and start up Visual Studio and then once Visual Studio is started I'll go ahead and create a new project um, that will house our database for, for this sample application. So I'll go ahead and select File and New for new File and then a new project wait for the dialog to come up, select New Project, and I'll select an ASP.NET Web Application. And I'm going to go ahead and change the project name to be something a little bit better for our sample project. So I'm going to go ahead and call this Task List, and then I'll go ahead and select OK. And now on the next step, I need to tell it that it's going to be an MVC project. In addition, I'm going to change the authentication model to require no authentication for our project. So I'll make sure that MVC is selected. And then I'm also going to deselect the Microsoft Azure option, as we're just going to host this on our local machine and not host this in the cloud. So now Visual Studio will go ahead and create our project for us. It takes just a few seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and build the software to make sure everything went OK. So I'll select Build. And you'll notice in the output window below, it's compiling and it's now succeeded. So once the build is completed, I'm going to go ahead and run this. So I'll start without debugging. We haven't really added any code at this point. So this should be the, the shell standard MVC project. And there we have it. So now it's running in our browser. And I'll go ahead and click through the menus just to make sure everything is OK. Looks good at this point. So I'll go ahead and close this window. And now we'll go ahead and add in our uh, database. And so we'll select Add. And we're going to select New Item. So once you select that, this dialog will come up. And I'm going to select Data under the components on the, on the left-hand side and I'm going to select an ADO.NET entity model. It, by default it calls it model 1, so that's just fine. And now we're going to select that it's going to be reverse engineered from a database. So I'll go ahead and select that. And so in this step now we have to add a connection to our database. Well it looks like the SQL browser is not set up on my development machine, so it doesn't show in the list. But I'll go ahead and select that it's going to be a Microsoft SQL server that we're looking for. And you'll notice in the server name, it doesn't, it doesn't find it automatically. So I'm going to have to go manually put in the server name. Well, a simple way to do that is I'll go ahead and bring up the SQL Management Studio. So we'll give that just a second to come up. So I'll bring up the SQL Management Studio. And now that that's up, if I look at the properties of my database, at the very top is going to be the name of your local server. So I'll go ahead and copy that. I'll go ahead and close the Management Studio and I'll paste that name into, um, into where it's asking for the server window. And now you'll notice all the databases in my server come up. So I'll go ahead and select the database that we created in the previous lesson. I'll test that connection. Looks like everything's good. So I'll select Next in this dialog. We want the latest version of the Entity Framework. And now it's going to ask us, what do we want to import? Well, I want to import the two tables that we created. So I'll go ahead and select all of the tables. And I'll select Finish. And now it's, Visual Studio is going to go ahead and build our Entity Framework database model. So uh, Windows is uh, asking to make sure this task is OK. And I'm going to go ahead and put that message away. I don't particularly want to see that every time I do it. So there we go. So now you'll notice in the Entity Framework inside SQL Server, our database with our task, our priority, and the relationship that we created uh, is in the, the Entity Framework Designer window. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and build this software to make sure nothing went wrong. I selected Build, and we'll look at the output window once again at the bottom. We notice that our build succeeded, and I'll go ahead and run this. We shouldn't see any changes because I haven't changed the user interface in any way. 
I just want to make sure that everything went wrong and nothing happened during our import or build of that and everything looks okay so I'll just go ahead and click through the menus once again again we shouldn't see any changes because we really didn't change the user interface we'll do that in the next lesson but uh, you can see where the the model has been created our model one the entity model and if I click on that it'll bring up the designer page again so pretty quick and easy step to design the, the data model that's really all there is to it I'll show you how now that we've built that data model how we can quickly build a user interface for our program and really get an application going up in a, in a really short amount of time so thank you so much and I'll see you in the next lesson